we got married and we wanted to sort of jump on the kid bandwagon relatively quickly. Well, we waited about 10 years before we decided to have children because we are planners and we wanted to map everything out. After about three years of trying to have children, um, we were told that our only option was, our only options were to adopt or to try uh, in vitro. Plan everything and map everything out and follow everything by the textbook and the guidelines and it doesn't always work out. But this certainly was not part of our plan. When a family first comes to us, when the baby's initially admitted, the word overwhelmed, I think, would be probably the best adjective I could use um, for that family. Um, they are frequently unprepared for what they see. This may be the most stressful event that a family has ever experienced. Um, these stresses can be manifest uh, by significant emotional responses such as grief, uh, guilt, uh, anxiety, depression, and uh, feelings of inadequacy. When you think of yourself having a child, your child being hooked up to tubes and a monitor is not the picture that's in your head. Waiting to see what was going to happen was terrifying, but I had no idea, you know, how terrifying. For me, I, I was absolute shock. Uh, despair. It was, it was just like an instant tragedy and I was just kind of in a fog. Didn't, it seemed like it was a dream. It was just a, a maze of, of, of rooms and doctors and nurses and machines and it, it was just a sense of disbelief. And I really struggled because going down there it was so hard for me to see the situation. I mean it assaulted every, every one of my senses like the smell and just watching him breathe. It was just heartbreaking to see his chest pull all the way to his back and just the alarms. And it was not only completely foreign, but realizing that this is my first child and this is our experience as parents, it completely, it's not what you expect. My most parents, when they see their children, they think, look at this beautiful baby. You know, I'm so, so blessed. I, I was horrified uh, because I didn't think that they would live. Um, uh, when I was a child, I found a baby bird once, and it was just helpless, and ended up dying. I tried to keep it alive. I had a flashback, and that's what I saw, you know, like two little sick baby birds uh, with their eyes still a few shut. I think, I think Carrie had the toughest time, you know, when it came time for her to go home from the hospital and be discharged, and then you're leaving your baby there in the NICU. I think that was just what really sets in that, you know, this is, this is a long-term situation. It's not some acute episode where, you know, it's 24, 48, 72 hours. And then there's the daily ups and downs where you go in and they're just not doing so well, you know? And some days you go in and you're, they're having a great day. But it's definitely a daily journey. One day, you know, one of our little guys would be doing great and the other one would be uh, struggling. And then, you know, then they would constantly flip-flop. Um, you know, issues with their eyes, issues with their stomach, issues with their lungs, um, issues with, with the breathing, which was significant. They did stop breathing regularly, and that was really what kept them there. They had figured out how to eat, we'd been taken off the feeding tubes, all of those things. The boys were in the special care nursery for about six weeks, and it was just as good as the NICU a much less scary place. I'm so thankful that Presbyterian has special care because I don't know any other place where that's available. And to have that step down nursery where you can sort of relax and say, this is a space for our family. My mother could come, his mother could come. Every, I mean, it was nice to have a place for us where we could bond with the children. Um, it was difficult to begin with to, to see them and you know, sometimes stopping the breathing and the problems they were having. but. Um, the fact that we had such good care, we were comfortable there, we actually had privacy if we wanted it. Um, it was, you know, it was a, a, a huge relief. Our hospital, uh, being a women and infants hospital, has a primary interest in meeting all of those considerations and trying to help the family as they navigate along that journey. It takes a real team uh, to care for a baby 24 hours a day. Neonatologists, nurses, respiratory therapists, occupational therapists, social workers, chaplains, all working together in concert as a family to minister to the needs of this infant and family. From, you know, the 
receptionist sitting at the desk as you walk into the NICU, to our nurses, to the doctors, to the um, nurse manager, everyone made us feel like we were welcome any time of the day. I never felt like I was so scared or so lonely or I couldn't handle the scenario because they were always there to talk to and they were very comforting, lots of good advice. They treated us with the utmost respect. And empathy. And empathy and made us feel um, so comfortable with any issues or questions or problems or concerns we had and we became friends with most of the staff and still consider them friends. It's okay to be scared and it's okay to cry and you know and it's okay to admit that to the doctors. Usually like I'm somebody that I feel like I have to advocate all the time and by doing that that I have to know the answer and I think part of that transition was saying trusting complete strangers who we hadn't even met to make decisions for your child and they were life and death decisions. And I take the opportunity to tell families what an awesome uh, responsibility and an honor it is uh, that they've entrusted the care of their baby to us and we feel it. The mission of Texas Health Resources is to improve the health of the people in the community we serve. We think the best way to do that is to incorporate family-centered care in every aspect. Be it reproductive endocrinology, uh, be it general women's care, be it cancer, whatever the needs of the ladies in our community, this hospital is there to try to meet those needs. The Margot Pro Center provides our community and gave our family a sense of hope, family-centered care, and they set us up for success when we took our both of our boys home. One after a seven-month NICU stay and one after just pretty much a Ted Spit delivery, and we went home three days. I felt confident as a mom. Overall, we're just so thankful for, you know, all the time that the staff put in, you know, for us individually, not just in our, you know, Carrie's care when she was delivering both of our children there, but also the staff in the NICU, when they really went out of their way to spend time away from their families, whether it's the doctors, the nurses or the therapists, but they really, you know, to them, like I said, it's more than a career. It's, it's, it's something they take home with them and they live and breathe it, and we're so thankful that we had them in our lives. I experienced um, not being able to get pregnant here. I experienced getting pregnant here. I experienced um, my entire pregnancy um, care here, um, our both deliveries here, um, good for one, and scary, terrifying for another. And I'm, I think we're obviously most, most thankful for them saving our son's lives. Um, it was just, it was top-notch medical care um, and just delivered with, with absolute empathy.